it's a clear, bright, crisp morning here at Brands Hatch. The sun's dispersed most of the icy patches on the circuit, and really it's a pretty kind of a perfect day to go for a spin to put these four exotic cars through their paces. I'm Dilly Barlow, by the way, and with me, ignition keys at the ready, and raring to get out and into the fast lane, is the magazine's associate editor and expert test driver, Mark Hales. Now then, Mark, before we get going, perhaps you'd just like to give us a quick talk on what's to come. Yes, a collection of Exotica. I haven't worked out exactly how much they're worth, but it's a substantial sum, or at least that's what our insurers said. We've got the traditional Aston Martin Vantage, V8, 450 horsepower, two-wheel drive. Lamborghini Countach, V12, Italian Mystic. We've got a Porsche 959, ultimate statement in technology, 200 miles an hour, four-wheel drive. And we've got another tradition, a Lister Mark III, V12 and 500 horsepower. As far as we know, that's the most powerful British car that anybody makes at the moment. Well, I think you've whetted the appetite there, Mark. Uh, shall we get going? Yes, indeed. Right, Mark, so we're into our first car of the morning, which is the Aston Martin Vantage, which I think is a very old-fashioned, conventional kind of a sports car. Yes, it is. Uh, it's deliberately old-fashioned. It's uh, an example of British craftsmanship. All aluminium body, big V8, double overhead camshaft engine at the front, driving the rear wheels through a, a five-speed manual gearbox. Powerful, 450 horsepower, still on carburettors. They've tried injection, they've gone back to carburettors, so it's even more old-fashioned. A big car, it's physically big, it's quite heavy, and it's powerful. So I'm expecting it to feel old-fashioned, but not unpleasantly so. It is a deliberate anachronism. Astons have kept it that way because people want it that way. Now, it's quite a short track here at Browns Hatch. Will this be good for testing out this particular car? Uh, it's less than ideal because uh, it's geared to do something like 180 miles an hour. So we're probably only going to get to use a couple of gears, probably second and third round the lap. So it's not really ideal for a car which is as long-legged as this. Well, I think the time's come to give those long legs a bit of a gallop round the, uh, <laughs> the circuit. Oh, I love the similes. <laughs> A nice solid sound. Yes, that's an unmistakable V8 rumble, isn't it? Unmistakable V8 noise. It's a sort of howl and a rumble at the same time. Quite a lively ride. You hear that slight popping and spluttering and pops and bangs from the exhaust. The turn in is quite good. There's quite a lot of grip. Sonic curbing. Okay, we're turning through McLaren into a clear way as so we start to pour it on. Wheel screech there. Yes, yeah, a bit of a chirrup from the tyres. 5,500 into fourth. Hard edge growl as we had indicated 120 into paddock. Let's leave it in fourth for paddock. Quite a good turn up. A bit of understeer there, I think, just said it turned in well. A little bit of a slide. Yeah. Up to Druids, 90 miles an hour, down to third. Rolling tyres again. Oh, we're quite a lot of understeer. Down along Cooper Strait. A lot of grip. You can feel that grip. Feel it holding. Yeah, 
Two. Had it. Squeeze on the throttle as we go down. There's quite a lot of understeer. The harder you press, the more it seems to understeer. Up to Druid. Down to third. Turn in at 55, 60. It did a bit slower that time and it didn't understeer so much, so perhaps it's down to technique. A bit of a slide along bottom bend there, we'll leave it in third, 110. Woo! Oh yeah, it's starting to wag about if you get on the power. So it's, um, it goes from understeer to oversteer. Quite a lot of understeer coming out of the clearways. Agricultural gearbox, it's clicking and crunching. It certainly tracks you about a bit, this motor car. It does, doesn't it? It's quite a lively ride. Quick though, I mean, there's no doubting the power of this thing. What was top? We got up to 130? It was what? an indicated 130. I'm, I'm a little bit tempted to disbelieve some of the speedos we're seeing. much as I'd expected it to be. It is a big beast, it's very powerful. It makes Brands Hatch feel a very short circuit. It is only just over a mile, but it shrinks it in a quite remarkable fashion. We actually got into fourth gear along the straight, which I, I didn't expect to do. It indicated 130 miles an hour coming into Paddock, 100 miles an hour up to Druids. It will wag its tail if you uh, give it a, a big boot full of throttle in a low gear out of a tight corner. You, you did seem to have to be working very hard. I mean, I yeah. just sitting in the passenger seat felt I was working pretty hard. Yes. <laughs> you were sort of going from lock to lock. It was uh, understeering into the corners, quite a lot of understeer as you went through them, and then got some oversteer on the exit. It's an old-fashioned, big, powerful, front-engine sports car. And it, it is much as I expected it would be. Seems if it'll take a bit of hammering, you can chuck it about with a certain amount of respect. Yeah, it's not quite as friendly as, as it might at first appear. You've got to catch it first. If it gets away with it, it'll spin you round. But a, a satisfying drive? 
Actually, remarkably so, yes. Well, Mark, our next car on the agenda is uh, a real little box of technological tricks. It's the Porsche 959 and it has practically every gizmo available or known to man, I think. Is that right? More or less, yes. It's a huge technological statement, as you say. It's a four-wheel drive, computer-controlled, six-speed transmission. It's uh, got electronics to make sure that the 450 horsepower that comes from the twin-turbocharged flat-six engine reaches whichever wheel is most capable of dealing with it. The shock absorbers are electronic. There's a switch here. You can uh, adjust the rate of the shockers with. It's very aerodynamic. It's reputed to do over 200 miles an hour. And yet, sitting here, it could be your everyday road-going Porsche. It's nicely finished. There's leather everywhere. There's even a little leather fairing around the gear lever. It's got a stereo. It's a tremendous mixture of technology, sophistication, comfort, electric seats, power steering. As you say, it's got a bit of everything. So with all this bit of everything that's high-tech, how are you going to expect that to, to show itself up on the road? How are you expecting well, it to drive? I think it's likely to be a lot easier to go fast in than some of the others because the power is distributed to all four wheels instead of just two. Therefore, you're asking the tyres to do less. Will it be the technological marvel that we're expecting? Will it go around as if it's on rails? I don't know. We'll have to find out. And do you think as a driver it'll make it easier for you to drive? Yes, I think it will. I'm pretty sure that until you get really close to the limit, you wouldn't suspect that this was a 450 horsepower car. Right, well, let, let's give it a shot, Mark, then. OK. Straight away, that's an unmistakable Porsche noise. It's the cooling fan that makes a noise like a jet fighter. First of the six gears is to the left and forward. We're sitting on the left-hand side of the car. Now, what's that? What's that telling you? That's a bit more technology, but I think it's <laughs> having a brainstorm at the moment. That's, uh, a sensor which tells us all the tyres are flat, which quite obviously they're not. You hear that uh, Porsche engine note deepening as it gets to 4,000 revs. That's unmistakable German flat six. It's a good solid rumble, isn't it, of a sound? Yes. It lets you know there's a lot of power behind you, that yes. sort of a noise. Brakes are very solid, you touch the pedal and they're there absolutely straight away. Feel that whoosh as the turbo comes in, that's quite different to the normally aspirated cars. Five, 
7, 120 into 5th, just for a moment, back to 4th again, brake quite hard. Well, obviously never make it into 6th on this particular circuit. No, I think I'm uh, quite surprised that we're getting to 5th. I don't think there's anything else we're well, going to do that in today. Force. Yeah, a lot of understeer. Feel that wallop as the turbo Gosh. comes in. I have to snatch forth on the exit of clearways there. Now you can actually leave it in fourth, going up to paddock, and it pulls sort of 130 ish. It saves a gear change, but it doesn't actually hit the red limiter. live up to your expectations? Yes, there was, a, there was more understeer than I was expecting, to be honest. I think Porsche could probably tune that out if they wanted, but when the power comes in, it understeers just like a front-wheel drive car, and yet, because it's driving all four wheels, in other words, the rear ones are being driven as well, although it makes the car push straight on, it has tremendous traction. It really does punch the car out of the bend. You can't, you can't feel any wheel spin. It just makes it nose on a bit more. Now, the fact that it has the computerized four-wheel drive, so that balances itself out, does that make it easier for you to drive? Or do you find yourself you're wanting to correct something that the computerization is doing for you? No, I'm not a great believer that you know electronics are a cure for everything. But you don't find yourself trying to fight what the electronics are doing for you. The only time you do feel a slight touch of waywardness is as we were coming into clearways with a couple of intakes of breath, and that's because the engine is hung right out the back, just like all the 9 Series Porsches. And uh, if you get into a corner a little bit too fast or on the brakes, then the tail does swing. So is it a bit of a minx? Is it mischievous or is it pretty solid? I think you could probably still get yourself into trouble uh, if you got into a corner too fast, but it's nothing like as wayward as the, the two-wheel drive Porsches. The brakes are fantastic. I mean, it really is uh, phenomenal brakes. So you're quite pleased with that? Mm. It's not a great armful like the Aston, but still very satisfying to drive.
right, Mark. So here we are in the Lister Mark III. Uh, a bit of a beast, I suspect, this uh, motor car. Yes, going to be uh, somewhat similar to the Aston. It's very powerful, 7-litre V12 engine. It's reputed to have something like 500 horsepower, and it's driving only the rear wheels. Five-speed manual gearbox. I expect uh, it's going to want to push its tail wide. I think it'll probably be a little bit friendlier than the Aston. I don't want to make the Aston out to be a, a real beast. It just demands a certain amount of respect. I think it's going to want to wag its tail. It's going to be very, very fast. Uh, I should think we'll be going probably 125, something like that, down the straight up to Paddock Hill Bend. It's rather noisy for a, a road car, but apparently that's the way Lister's customers like it. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, you've said what you think it's going to do. Let's see what it actually will do. OK. Very distinctive sound. It's a 12-cylinder noise, very distinctive. It's a, a sort of wail. I think uh, the tearing calico analogy is usually applied to Bugattis, but it's got a rasp to it. It sounds a bit like an angry bumblebee. <laughs> I'll take your word for that, Billy. <laughs> Headroom with the sunroof fitted. Right. I believe it has the reputation of being one of the fastest British cars. The trouble with having cars that'll do that kind of speed is finding anywhere that you can actually do it in this country. So you can't really put them to the test? No. A German magazine, I believe, tested it at 180 miles an hour. And so oh, it's actually quite a nice sharp turn in there. Uh, it's very definitely drying out now, a bit, Yes, isn't it? much more agile on the turn in than I thought. 100 miles an hour going down towards clearways. Let's uh, leave it in fourth. That's a rasping noise that sounds like an intestinal disorder. It's just the sonic curbing. Third gear for clearways. We can pour it on. Listen to that howl. 6,000 revs, 100 miles an hour. Straight fourth gear, indicating 130, over 140. Uh, sounds a bit optimistic. Let's leave it in fourth for Paddock Hill Bend. Turn in is quite sharp, it's quite agile, not much on the steer. Up the hill to Druids, indicated 100, down to third. And then, if you want to wag its tail, not much, it's quite impressive. Pull fourth before we go down the hill. A phenomenally smooth so, ride. It doesn't throw you about, even as much as a Porsche, in my view. Right, well, nice little slide there. A lot of slide there. With that, with that much power, as I said before, even on a dry track, I think you can expect that. Nearly 6,000 revs in force, coming up to paddock. Nice firm brakes. A sharp turn in. It's actually more of a racer than I thought it would be. Felt the tail sliding right out there. Yes. Actually drying up quite nicely. A bit of gentle understeer. 
good traction coming out, all fourths on the bottom of the hill, here the tyres howl, we've got a funny noise from the back there, but I can keep it absolutely flat all the way along the Cooper Strait, damp the brakes, turn in. Yes, the brakes are very, very good indeed. Let's keep it smooth and tidy here, he said. <laughs> the giant wheel-sawing moment. Smooth is quick, I'm told. Certainly quick. It certainly is. And it's certainly smooth. Let's call it off and talk about that. So did it live up to your expectations? It was actually better than I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be a real monster. I was very pleasantly surprised by the traction. Yes, you can make it uh, slide about and you can make the rear of the car slide wide by giving it a, a great boot full of throttle. But you don't need to do that and if you're just a little bit circumspect, you can really pour on the power out of the tight corners and it just sits down and goes. I'm also impressed by the way a big heavy car like this, because they are heavy, turns into the corners. Once you've got your braking done and you've aimed it into the corner, it really points in with the feeling of a much smaller car. It's really very surprising. And of course it, it is massively powerful. I'm not sure whether, whether I believe the 150 that we saw coming up to Paddock. It was certainly going very, very well. 6,000 revs in fourth. Brakes too, uh, as you remarked, are amazing for a road car. They, they don't seem to tire at all. The Porsche's brakes were of a similar level. The Aston unfortunately wilted a little bit. As you said, you have to treat any car that goes at this speed with an, an immense amount of respect, but it seemed to me you could be play a touch more the hooligan with Indeed, it. Indeed. The feel of the steering is perhaps a little bit too light for my tastes, but it's very responsive, it's very true. It, it does what you want it to do. And I was very pleasantly surprised by the way you could actually slide the car about, get it back from all sorts of angles without any great drama. It didn't have a, a lurch and a kick. It just came back into line and off we went. Right, well, this next car in is a, uh, a mean looking machine, if ever there was one. It's the Lamborghini. Kuntash, curious name, but I'm reliably informed that it means look at that, which is presumably what people would say if you took it out shopping down Neasden High Street. <laughs> it's one of those. I don't think it's the sort of thing you'd take shopping anywhere <laughs> because you can hardly see out of the thing. And you're sitting here, the snout slopes away, you can't see anything forward of the fascia, you can't see anything backwards because there's a big hump where the bodywork goes over the carburetors, and that's interesting. It's on carburetors rather than injection. It's a big V12 engine, 450 horsepower, 
mid-engined, the engine sits right behind us and the gearbox then sits behind that. So it's the classic mid-engined sports car. The doors in classic Countach fashion open upwards and you've got to be extremely careful. I've just fetched my head a terrific crack getting in here. So let's hope my senses aren't disturbed. It's not too easy to get into either. It's one of no. those sort of bum first and then swing your legs around. Exactly right. So if you're taking the girlfriend out, tell her to wear trousers. <laughs> yes, but, yeah. <laughs> but it's much more a, a racer than uh, some of the others sitting around here. I mean, there's a big slotted aluminium gate here. It's a very chunky sort of gear shift. It's very direct and positive, clicky feeling. Typical Italian car. Knees are up round your elbows. And for people who are six feet, you know, you, know, you need to crank your head to sit in here. It's an unmistakably Italian environment, Italian leather everywhere, and it's a car which has had a tremendous mystique surrounding it ever since the 70s. And how do you think it's going to drive? Well, uh, it is the classic mid-engine sports car, as I said. I would think it'll have tremendous traction. I think it'll be very unforgiving of mistakes because uh, the weight is concentrated around the centre, therefore if it's going to swing it'll do it very quickly. I would think it will probably push on quite hard when you uh, accelerate, in other words the nose will want to run wide of the corner. I think it'll be very hard to make it wag its tail. I think it'll be quite a demanding car to drive fast. Bit of a, a high spirited thoroughbred? Indeed, yes it is all of that. Well uh, let's give it a whirl okay. and see what happens. Note that 12-cylinder noise. The, the throttle is, is very stiff. Uh, apparently this is something to do with the right-hand drive conversion. Unique starter noise, it sounds as if it's not connected to the engine. Not a great deal of headroom. What about the pur purring noise about it? Oh, the throttle is stiff. It's a recipe for kangaroo petrol here. No power assistance on the steering. And we're off. gear shift. You hear the thumps and rattles of the suspension. You can actually feel them in your behind as well. Yes, you can. Much it's more so than any of the other cars. You can see to the pumps job this. Well, the steering actually gets heavier as you put some lock on. Go down the hill, the sun's right in our eyes now. Listen to the whine of the gearbox. Very stiff, makes it difficult to put the power on smoothly. Nowhere to put your left foot to brace yourself. Very noisy. Isn't it? Yes. Second. 
Try today has, has performed rather differently from what you anticipated. Yes, I think that's probably true to say. Yeah, quite, it's quite surprising. Yeah? But uh, a pleasure to drive? I think a pleasure is probably, uh, I mean, yes, of course it's a pleasure, but it demands a lot of concentration to drive on a circuit. It's very much a racer. Mm -hmm. 